I've camped every year of my life on the beach, every summer. And when I was a kid, there was so much fish, it was just abundant. We could have easily 14 rows of fish. Now, we haven't had a run here in three years. We worry about how are we going to teach our young ones if there's no fish to catch? If there's no mussels, no clams? How can you acquire a taste for something that doesn't exist? Our relationship with the sea is ancient. We have a lot of respect for her. We're thankful for what she provides to us. Carried through all of that is whatever we kill is for food. So we understand that we're not to take any life without using it correctly. The ocean is sick, and we as men have made her sick. But she's the one that feeds us every single day. And yet, we're toxifying her, we're hurting her. And so we're spending time doing the science, trying to find out what is going on with the resources of the sea, why are they disappearing? So in the marine protected area, we selected species that were both cultural keystone species, meaning you know you take them out of the culture and they'll sort of have this ripple effect, and also ecological keystone species. So similarly, where they're you know important to sort of identifying the health of that ecosystem. So we focused on mussels, smelt, and seaweed. Wow, how interesting! An MPA or a marine protected area is an area that is uh, designated by the state to have certain restrictions, certain take of a particular species or no take at all in an effort to conserve the area and provide a safe haven for species to go away from fishing pressures all up and down the north coast. There were a variety of different projects that hit on all different habitats that are gonna be included in MPAs. When the state decided to put these MPAs in our area, the tribe stood up and says, we're gonna continue our traditional practices of harvesting these resources. It was pretty clear in the law that there wasn't really acknowledgement of tribal rights in the marine protected areas. There was a need to sort of make that case to the state that tribes, you know, retain these unceded rights to continue to use the ocean. We were successful in getting tribal take recognized in the state process, so it's been, you know, a, a small victory in at least creating a space within the state framework. So then that rolled into the MPA baseline monitoring program. I came on board to conduct the MPA baseline monitoring projects, which were a collaboration between tribes and academic institutions to establish a baseline of data of species that are present, population How abundance, and That's that sort rocky. of thing. We can try that. We can try that. So besides our biotoxin monitoring for mussels, razor clams, and plankton, we also do our smelt habitat assessments. So this is a GPS unit. So what we're gonna do is um, we'll walk the perimeter of this gravel bed. And this gravel bed here is what we would consider uh, smelt habitat. All right, well, should we try to go get some more mussels then? So it's important to have a tribal perspective when coming into these projects because indigenous people of the North Coast have been here since time immemorial. They've seen the changes, they know what's there. To have their perspective and their traditional knowledge in these projects is a key piece to understanding the current resources and the current uses of these resources. Indigenous peoples have been using these areas forever and there is some level of management going on between people and environment. And so I, I think we're sort of far removed from understanding that intrinsic connection and sort of interrelationship. You have the traditional side on how to take care of resources, and then you have the actual numbers or data that we collect. 
and it shows that change. So it all works together. In the sense, in Western science, it's just backing up what we've been taught forever.